So the floor crafter I've chosen to do this segment on, let's see here, is a, is a machine that I personally have not gone through in quite some time. I actually haven't sanded with it in some time, I haven't done anything with it. So this is gonna be just as fun for you guys as it is for me. So I'm gonna take it out of my transport dolly here. Okay, and let's see if I can't get to show you guys here. All right. All right, so now first thing we wanna do is we're gonna see where the machine is cutting. Okay, so let's see here. Let me get it up on my panel. Here. Okay, all right. So first thing I wanna do is I'm actually gonna use some powder. I'm just gonna powder up my sandpaper a little bit. Now for this, you could use sawdust. You, I have uh, chalk in here, contracting chalk. Uh, you could use baby powder. You could use a whole whole bunch of different things. There's a piece of 100 grit paper on here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just powder it up. So this way when I go and I lightly touch the drum down on the surface, it's gonna give me the footprint of exactly where the drum is cut. Okay, so I'm gonna take off the paper. Make sure we got power, proper power. And for this, I'm actually gonna take the fan belt off because I doubt you guys wanna hear that. It run a little bit quieter so you guys could actually hear what I'm saying. All right, so now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn the machine on. I'm gonna move the, the machine right over a spot where I wanna touch the surface. And I'm just going to lightly let the machine do the work. I'm just going to barely let the drum touch. I'm just going to let it kiss the surface so I could get an accurate reading of where the footprint of the drum is. That's it. Okay. So, if you look, we're cutting a little heavy on the right side, looking at it from behind the machine. A little heavy on the right side. We do have some contact here and here. You can definitely tell that you're you're pretty close to cutting the entire width of the drum, okay? So first thing I'm gonna check is on the side, I'm gonna check my level adjustment. I'm getting ready to throw this thing out here. Can you guys see that? Let's see where we at. Okay, so what I'm looking for here is I'm looking to make sure that this arrow and this tick mark that's stamped on the side of the body are lined up. Okay, so if I look, those are perfectly lined up. So the reason why those are a big deal is because at the factory, we actually use a height gauge. And if I was to take this cover off the drum here, Okay, this nut right here. If I was to take that off, um, I would have access to the to the drum shaft with the nut. And what we do is we put a height gauge on a perfectly flat surface, uh, and we check the height of where the the center of the drum shaft is. And we do it on the other side with the pulley as well. What that does is that lets us know that our drum shaft and our drum are perfectly flat. So this drum, our machine is set up perfectly flat. Okay, so this drum actually needs to be trued up a little bit. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And then what I'm gonna do is, just to cover up that mark, just take a little bit more dust and cover that up. This way we have our, a true clean reading. Okay, now what I'm gonna do to surface the drum, now that I know that my wheels are, are level, and my drum is level, I'm on a good flat surface all the way across, consistent. Okay, I got my piece of 100 grit paper. I'm gonna turn the machine on and I'm just gonna lightly let the drum ride on the sandpaper that's on the, on the base here. And I'm just gonna slowly true up my drum. Now the other thing I should say, you don't wanna stay in one spot. You wanna actually move the, the machine just forward and backwards a little bit 
because you don't want to heat up just one spot of your sandpaper. Okay, so you'll notice I'll be rocking the machine just slowly back and forth a little bit so I don't don't create a, a flat spot. In the <laughs> Okay, so now if you can see, we're cutting perfect eight inches across. Okay, we have the whole footprint of the drum. We're just gonna put some more chalk down. We're just gonna do the kiss test again, as I like to call it. Just to check the footprint. One more time, make sure we're getting that whole surface. Okay, so there you have it. We have our perfect, consistent straight line all the way across. Okay, the thickness is consistent throughout the whole mark. So that's letting us know that our drum is cutting perfectly flat. Okay, um, we're cutting the full eight inches of the drum. So we're not going to have any, any edge dig or anything like that. Okay, so, so that's first step on how to uh, surface your drum. Okay, now a lot of guys like to use, they'll take a piece of drum or belt paper and they'll cut it in half and they'll have one guy stand on it in their garage or, or on a flat floor um, and, and try and surface the drum that way. I don't recommend that because even if you take the, the fan belt off of your machine, just the centrifugal force that the drum is causing actually creates a vacuum and it'll pull up the center of that paper. Doesn't matter how taut you pull the paper, it's still gonna happen and you're not gonna true up your drum uh, properly. You're, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna take out more of the center than you are on the sides. Okay, so I don't recommend that. I have some, you could use sticky back like OBS paper um, or this, I just use some spray adhesive and I just I sprayed this down. I let it sit for 15 minutes and it was good to go. Okay, but I know this is perfectly flat. Um, a good way to make sure uh, is, is a level, okay? And not that the floor has to be level, but you want the floor to be perfectly flat. And we all know level is a, Good straight edge, right? So what we want to do is we want to check here, and what we're looking for is we don't want any gaps underneath. And we're not just going to check it this way. We're going to check it this way in several different spots to make sure that we have a good, consistent, flat surface all the way across. Okay, I'm going to get, check it here. I'm going to check it here. I'm going to check it here, and I'm going to check it here. Okay, so a lot of times you get on a garage floor, like over here, we'll say, okay, and it's not it's not always flat, okay? Um, you'll have some light coming through, and all of that is going to transfer to your drum on your on your machine. Okay. Uh, one of the questions that I got, which I'll I'll head back over here and I'll answer one of these questions real quick. One of the questions I got um, was from Rick Arnold last week. He asked me, "Is it necessary to level your wheels before you uh, before you dress your drum?" That doesn't matter what machine. Yes, you want to make sure that your, your wheels are level before you dress the drum. Okay, if, if your wheels aren't level, okay, what you're going to do is you're actually going to cause your, your drum to become cone-shaped. Okay, because what will happen is if your wheels aren't level, let's say you're cutting heavy on, on the right side, and you go to surface your drum because your wheel and your wheels are out, you're actually going to create your drum to be cone-shaped. Now, when you do that, you're, you're going to run into tracking problems. You're going to run into only, you know, four inches of the drum is cutting because, again, you thinned out the side of the drum that was making contact with the floor and not the other part of the drum that wasn't in contact with the floor. Okay, there you go. That's how you dress your drum. Um, I will say this. All the new floor crafter drums that come from the factory, all of the edges are rolled. Um, they're rolled about a, a quarter of an inch uh, from the factory. Um, I recommend that if you guys want your edges of your drum to be rolled, to bring it into a authorized service center. Uh, Warrior's asking me what what you recommend if you're on site without this setup. Okay, Lori, so I actually built this setup. I think it cost me 
thirty dollars to build that that platform that I have. I got you could go to Home Depot and they even have I think that's uh, two feet wide by three feet long. It's just perfect size. Uh, they have those project boards you could get. Uh, I bought one of them and then I just got two by fours and uh, I screwed it in. I made sure you know everything was flat. I didn't make sure I didn't have any warped wood or anything like that. And as you saw when I put the level on there. Um, you know, it was perfectly flat and I keep that on my work truck, you know, so uh, another benefit is, you know, if if you're on a job site and I'm in the area, I could always come out and and help you uh, with that as well. Dave Merrill, what brand of spray adhesive? Uh, you could use whatever uh, you could use contact cement, anything uh, doesn't doesn't matter as long as it's a uh, high temp um, and and it's going to set up quickly and and work for you. That's that's most important. OK, uh, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go and I'm going to take that top roller assembly out and I want to go over, you know, what you want to look for in your top roller assembly. I know I pulled it out last week, um, but I feel like I kind of blew through it really fast. And there are some things that I noticed on that top roller that um, I wanted to talk about. So I'm going to go pull that. Unplug it. Just like I went over last week, you got these three bolts on the side that hold your, your top roller assembly in place. I'm just going to take those out. I like to loosen them all before I just take one out. Again, when you do this, make sure your machine's unplugged. You want to be safe. Don't want to have any... Uh, Happy accidents. Okay, now we got our top roller assembly out. Let's bring it over here. Okay, so. Things you wanna look for. Now, first thing you wanna look for, which this is what I noticed last week. Can you guys see this right here? See how that's cut into? That's. That's something you want to be careful of, okay? So if you look, okay, that's actually almost at the breaking point, okay? That's one of the, the worst ones I've seen, okay? So what this does, let me grab that proper Allen key. Give me one second. This is the, the joint that actually all the stress is on. Okay, so this is our, our rod, and we have our female rod end here. Okay, and this is, as you can see, it's got like kind of a swivel on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to pull this off. The way we're gonna pull this off is we have these little snap rings right here. Okay, and you wanna be careful with these because you'll go to take them off and they'll shoot across the room and you'll never see them ever again. Okay, so we're just going to take the one side off, and this should just slide right out this pin. Okay, and then the top roller should just come right off. Okay, so now one thing you want to note on your Forecrafter top roller, you can see you got a flat spot here. Okay, that flat spot, when we go to put this back, you want to make sure it's facing down so it rides on this shoulder right here. So when I go to reinstall this, I want to make sure that flat spot's pointing down. Over the years, I've seen a lot of guys come in and they have their, their machine like this and they're saying, oh, I can't get it to track properly and it's giving me all kinds of problems. That's part of the reason why, okay? So when, you, when we go to put that back together, I'll, I'll walk you through that, okay? So here we have our, our bracket assembly. So this is our lower bracket here. This is our upper bracket, okay? Back here, we have our guide rollers. Okay, this is what we call the spur, but essentially if you look at the bottom, this is all that linkage that connects the top part of the bracket to the lower part of the bracket. Okay, just like that. And then this 
comes up. This is just like on top. We have our female rod end, which goes to this rod and comes all the way up. Okay, so now if I was going to repair this, which I eventually will have to do, um, we're going to need a C-clamp. Okay, we're going to put this all the way in the down position. I have this extremely oversized C-clamp that I'll just use to show you. But what we're going to do is when we're looking at this from the bottom, you want to make sure that you don't get that that stud coming out of that top bracket. I'm just going to tighten this down. Okay, just like that. We're going to tighten it down. Once we get that tightened down, okay, we can then go by taking this apart, undoing these. These use a 3 8 inch wrench, okay. Now behind here, which I can actually probably show you real quick, let me just get a wrench. There's a little spring washer. So I'll show you this real quick. Let's see, you see that there? So if I was to take this off, I have this little spring washer right here, okay? It's like a little wave washer, okay? You see that? So I've another thing I've seen over the years is a lot of guys will take this and they'll, they'll put it on their, their bolt like that and then try and put this back in. And it doesn't work like that because this is actually a mini shoulder bolt, as you can see. Okay, you got the little shoulder right up here. Okay, and that's actually what this little linkage sits on. So when we go to put this back together, I'm just going to line this up. You don't want to hit it off like I just did. Let's see. You want to put that on there, line this up, and then you want to put your screw in. Now, I constantly like to wiggle this to make sure that um, A, it's staying loose and I'm not getting caught or bound up on anything. So I like to just keep wiggling that to make sure it's loose. Uh, even because of that shoulder, you'll see there's still very, very, very little bit of play in there even though this bolt is tight, okay? You don't want to over tighten this because this is steel going into aluminum. And if you over tighten it, you could strip it out. So you don't want to do that, all right? So. off and we'll put our top roller back on flat side down put our pin slide it back in put our spring washer back on normally you just push it on with your hand just like that and it'll click into place um, let me see here um, Brandon Krause from Red River Four Company, he asked me last week, uh, he said he's got an older uh, upper roller assembly like this, and he says it's it's tough to move. I'm, I'm imagining that he was talking about this is, is hard to move, and he asked what my suggestions were. Number one suggestion is A, to make sure that there's no dust in here, okay? Um, when your top roller is together, you should have play like this, side to side, okay? It should, it should be moving freely. Um, beyond that, um, I would tell you to bring it to an authorized repair center. Uh, they can take all of this apart and get it back together, line up your linkage properly um, so that you don't have issues. Uh, this linkage, I don't, I don't wanna go into this, how to take this apart. A, because I don't have the parts with me right now, but B, because if you don't put the linkage back in 100% properly um you'll actually have a hard time getting the paper on it will be one end of the spectrum the opposite end of the spectrum is is that the top roller won't be tight enough on the paper so that will in turn give you tracking issues because you're, you don't have enough pressure coming up to the paper when you when you put this in the in the up position which it is, which is in now okay so when you do take your top roller assembly out other things you want to look for is what i do is i'll take this out and I'll actually spin my top roller. 
I don't know if you guys could hear that, but I could actually hear those bearings. Okay, and this thing's still spinning. It shouldn't spin that much. These bearings definitely need to be changed. Okay, uh, any kind of noise in there is, is a good indicator that, um, you know, you need to swap out your bearings. I also do the same thing on my guide rollers on either side. I'll spin them. Again, these bearings are making noise as well. This one's okay, but because it's the inside guide roller, uh, if if I was trying to do this on a budget, if I was just on a job site, what I would do is I would take this, um, if the inside guide roller was good, I would take this and I would put it on the outside because the outside one you could always see when you from, from the access door. And I would take this one, which I'm going to swap out the bearings on or just replace the whole roller completely, and I'll put this one on the inside because you can't see it. Um, so at least I have the peace of mind knowing that the new one's on the inside and I don't have to take my top roller assembly out of my machine to check it anytime soon. Okay. Um, so now, uh, next thing I want to get into is I'm going to go over how to check your wheels. I'm just going to take this and I'm going to throw it up on end like that so this way now I could see my wheels and I'll bring you guys down here so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing okay so now we got our wheels all right so as you can see this machine's been sitting for some time all right what I like to do is I just take my finger or a clean rag and I'll just make sure I wipe off all the debris first all right so I'll get all that debris off okay check all these wheels now, the best way to do this is with a straight edge, a true straight edge. And what you want to do is, I like to take a straight edge and I'll do this. I'll put this across here. And what I'll do is I'm using the straight edge. Uh, oh, let's see if you guys can see that. I don't think you can. I'll put the straight edge right across the top of my wheel bracket, just like this. Okay, and I'll actually get it straight and I'll spin the wheel. And I'm just looking for a high or low spot when I spin each wheel to make sure that I don't have an out of round wheel. Okay, so this one is actually out around just a little bit. Um, and I'll do the same thing over here. I'll find the flat spot. I'd get, get this wedged in here and I'll just spin it and I'm looking looking for that, that high or low spot that may or may not be there, okay? And same thing over here, okay? Just looking for, looking for that wheel to see if it'll give me that high or low spot, okay? So that's how we check our wheels, make sure our wheels are still in round. Um, if you have out of round rear wheels, okay? This is, this is important because this is gonna help you guys diagnose your machine in the field. If you have an out of round rear wheel, Okay, that's going to cause waves in your floor. Okay. So what's going to happen is if you have your rear wheel and it's out of round, okay, that high spot, every time that high spot hits, okay, it's going to cause that machine to dip and, and cut a little bit more aggressively into the floor. Okay. And it's only going to happen every two and a half inches, because if you were to take that wheel and cut it and lay it straight out, it's about two and a half, three inches long. So what's gonna happen is, is you're gonna, you're gonna have that high spot and you're gonna have a dip and a dip. And I see this a lot online. A lot of guys will say that their machine is leaving chatter marks um, and they'll show me a picture and it's not chatter, it's actually waves. Um, a, a good way to tell is chatter marks are really fine and they're really close together. Um, you could take a, inch and a half section of your floor and look and see if you have chatter. Uh, if you have a, a roll or a wave in the floor, that you're gonna need to, that's typically what most people see when you have windows and natural light coming in at, you know, as every homeowner will say, oh, well, exactly at five o'clock when the sun is at this point and it comes through my window just right, you could see this mark in the floor. Um, that's typically gonna be either a wave or some kind of dish out. Um, so that's from the rear wheel. If one of your side wheels is out of round, that's gonna be a completely different type of effect that is it's gonna have on your floor. If your side wheel's out of round, what's actually going to happen is it's gonna create uh, a dig spot on one side, 
So, and that's going to be the same thing. About every three to four inches, those wheels are a little bit bigger than the rear wheels. Um, so uh, you'll see it's almost like leaving it an edge dig every every three to four inches. Um, and that's actually because, you know, again, same thing with that high spot. If you got two, two wheels that are out of round, okay, you're potentially going to have all marks going down your whole floor on either side. Okay. Um, so that's, that's going to be the difference if your rear wheel is out of round as opposed to your side wheels being out of round. After every job, I really strongly recommend taking a blower, just blowing everything off. Um, when you keep your top roller clean, your assembly clean, and the inside of your, your, your drum well and everything clean, uh, it, it just makes sure it, it gives you peace of mind that everything's going to be working properly. Right. Um, so those are real basic things that you should be on the lookout for, that you guys should be just trying to, to check yourselves on a job site. Now's perfect. A lot of guys have a lot of downtime. Go through your stuff. Check your wheels. Check to make sure your drum is, is true and level. Um, if you don't feel comfortable with it, you know, uh, you got guys like, like KO or, you know, I got Ampro down here. Most of the time you bring your machine in and ask them to to – to dress an edger pad or or to surface your drum they bring it into your your local shop uh if you don't have a shop i strongly make it strongly recommend making one of those boards that i i made up uh again checking your belts you want to make sure and belts is simple you, you know you're just flipping them over i'll grab a belt and i'll show you okay you're just gonna take your belt okay and you just want to inspect it visually inspect it all the way around okay this is a fan belt and what i like to do is i like to flip it inside out just like this. And what that does is if there's any dry rot or any cracks, and I just kind of put a little bit of pressure on it like this, those cracks or dry rot is going to expose themselves right away. And if I have anything like that, I'll go and I'll buy a new belt. I'll take that old belt and I'll leave it on my truck. Um, this way, A, I always have a backup. God forbid you're on a job site and a belt pops on you or snaps, whatever, something freak happens. That always happens when you're out in the middle of nowhere, you can't get to a distributor, it's the weekend, whatever it may be, but when you have an extra one on, on the back of your truck, it saves the day. So uh, so I always recommend that, you know, even though this belt is still okay, um, but it's got some dry rot, some cracks in it, still leave it on the back of your truck because it might get you out of trouble one day. All right, so no other questions. What I'm going to go into now is I actually, last week, I asked some of you guys to send me in some questions if you want me to answer them live on air. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, is dressing an American 8 drum different than a floor crafter? Yes, it's different. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't have an American 8 in, in my garage right now. I don't think so anyway. No, I don't. Um, I can try and get one uh, and, and show you, but Again, you need to level the wheels. Uh, the process essentially is the same. Uh, you want to make sure your wheels are level uh, before you do anything. Just leveling the wheels is a different process, uh, different tools, uh, different way of, of doing it. And then from there, uh, the way you dress the drum is going to be a little bit different as well. The American Ace have a different drum. It's a softer red rubber drum as opposed to the Floor Crafter, which is the hard black rubber uh, he asked, what causes the lines in the back of the belt? Okay, so let me grab a belt real quick and let me see if I have one that's got lines. So I don't really have a belt that's got lines in it right now. But if you guys look, so what Mark is talking about is the lines that you'll sometimes see in the back of your belt. Okay. Um, what that is, is uh, right now in our industry, we have like this piece of blaze or uh, some of the other ceramic papers out there. Uh, they're really aggressive grits and they're great for, you know, sanding floors and, and getting old finish up. And uh, especially some of those aluminum oxide jobs, it, it's great for all that. Um, one thing is that you, you just want to take note of is that all that grit, when it fractures and resharpens that paper, all that grit that fractures off gets sucked into your machine. OK, um, most of it goes into the dust bag uh, with all your other dust, but some of it actually does get lodged in your top roller. OK, um, this one is actually extremely clean, uh, which kind of baffles me because nothing else on the machine is clean. Uh, <laughs> but what you'll actually see is if you when you go to inspect your top roller, I just take my hand and I'll just rub it across just like this um, and you'll actually feel the grit in there. Most of the time you could 
take your fingernail um, and just kind of pick it out a little bit. Um, but all that grit that's lodged in there, that's actually where a lot of those lines come from, okay? Because they're hard, the rubber is soft on your, on your roller and that hardness presses up against the back of the paper and that's what all those lines are caused from, okay? Uh, so I hope that answers your question, Mark. Uh, and Mr. Wayne Lee sent me a couple of questions from Middle Tennessee Lumber. So Wayne asked a couple of questions. First question he asked, he said, how do you determine when a drum is worn past basically its prime, uh, past the point of where you could keep continue to true it up? Now, um, that's a good question. Uh, on the floor crafter drum, there's the grooves in the drum. Okay, so if you were to take the thickness of that groove, okay, which, give me one second, I, I could actually maybe see if I could do this right now for you guys. It'd almost be like a tread depth gauge for a tire. Let me just flip this camera around so you can see what I'm talking about. So, floor crafter drum, you have all these grooves, right? So if you were to take the actual thickness of this groove, okay, in, in here, this groove, okay, which we'll say is an eighth, an eighth of an inch. So when you basically, when the depth of this groove is about half that, a sixteenth, so what I'm talking about from the top to the core, the inside core, you basically have about a sixteenth of of material left on your drum that's when you know you're you're basically at the the life expectancy of your drum okay um i hope that makes sense uh if that doesn't make sense somebody just send me a comment and i'll try and explain it a little bit better um wayne's next question was also to aid with side cut how much should the edge of the drum be rolled i kind of answered this uh couple minutes ago when I was talking about, um, you know, drums coming from the factory, them being rolled, they rolled them about a quarter of an inch. Um, uh, again, I don't recommend that you guys roll the edges of your drum uh, in the field. It's very dangerous. I really, that's one of those things. Uh, I don't recommend it at all. Bring it, bring it to your repair shop. Let them do it. They do it every day. Uh, they're extremely experienced doing it. Um, they have all the right tools to do it properly. It's not something that you want to be doing on a job site. Uh, you don't want to get your, your hands sucked in. I've done it once or twice. It does not feel good, and you could potentially lose a finger. So, um, yeah, moving on to the next thing. Uh, and then Wayne also asked me, his third and final question was, in my judgment, what is the lifespan of a drum? It's, it's all conducive. It's conducive to how well a guy is taking care of their machine. It's conducive to what kind of wood you're sanding on a daily basis. Um, you know, some guys sand with their, their machines every day because they have two crews. One guy's a, you know, one crew is a sand crew. The other guy is just, you know, a, a finish crew. Um, you know, some guys will sand one week, the next week they're, they're putting finish down or staining and finishing, uh, you know, so everybody's different. So, um, it's one of those things that it's, it's really conducive to how hard or how well you take care of your equipment or how hard you run your equipment. Um, it's, it's, you know, your climate comes into factor guys in really hot and dry areas like Texas or Arizona, you know, they're going to be more prone to that rubber, you know, getting dry rot and, um, and, and seeing more, uh, natural effects like that come into play that as opposed to somebody in Boston or New Jersey, um, you know, I've seen guys come in with the machine that's five years old and they have to swap out their drum. Uh, I've seen guys come in with a machine that's 25 years old and their drum is perfectly fine and, and that's it, you know. So it's one of those things, it's it's absolutely conducive to, you know, how you're taking care of your equipment, if you're doing proper maintenance, um, you know, all, all those things come into play. Rear wheel yoke, it's a common issue, yes. Um, we actually have a upgrade kit for your your rear wheel assembly a lot of guys what happens is when they uh when they're taking their machine in and out of their truck or their van uh the first point of contact is is that rear wheel so guys will actually when they let that machine down that's the first thing that's hitting and over time that'll actually cause you to bend your rear wheel shaft which will create 
some caster buck. Um, and I'm sure everybody here knows what caster buck is. If you don't, um, it's basically when you're sanding a floor and you go forward and when you, you go to come back, the machine kind of, your hands kind of jerk because that rear wheel is catching so hard. Um, it's not pivoting properly and it, it'll cause the machine to jerk on you. Um, that's what caster buck is. So if you have a lot of that going on with your forecrafter that has a dual wheel setup, I would say it's going to be one of two things. One is either your rear wheel shaft is bent that stud um or b you have a rear wheel a one or two both your rear wheels are out of around and that high spot is catching and that's and that's giving you that caster buck so it could be one of those two things so if you do have something like that um and you're not sure what it is and and you want to dive into a little bit more again reach out to me i'll be more than happy to talk you through how to how to figure out which one and um and we could go from there all right so this time at this time right now i mean uh i basically went over pretty much all the stuff i wanted to go over for today you guys can reach out to me on Facebook, uh, Facebook Messenger, Instagram, Instagram, a you know, direct message, uh, my phone number. I've put it out online several times. Uh, if you need it, just let me know. My email, kevin.brophy at americansanders.com. Uh, you could email me. Pony Express, Carrier Pigeon, whatever. Uh, get in touch with me. Ask me questions. Let me know what, what kind of content you guys want to see. Um, and uh, that's it. So, again, this is uh, America Sanders Kevin helping you guys get the advantage. And uh, that's it. All right. Everybody have a great day. Enjoy your weekend.